How's it going everyone? Today we're going to be talking about the top 10 films of 2020. I've been able to finally get through some of these films uh, that have been released a little bit later in the year. Some of these other films that are trying to qualify for the Academy Awards. It's like, are these 2020 films or are these already 2021 films? And so uh, I tried to see as much as I could in for the films uh, for 2020. Because we had so many average films, it was hard to rank, you know, all the, all of them and put them in a top 10 list. But luckily, towards the end of the year, we started getting some better films. And I'm like, finally, I can actually form a list uh, because this could have all been just a coin toss, honestly. Um, if it wasn't for November and December, I don't know if I'd be doing a video for this. I do have some honorable mentions. These are average films, they have some good in them, and I did enjoy them overall, but they just were not able to crack my top 10. I got quite a bit of them. Some of those films would include Invisible Man, Marini's Black Bottom, Mank, Tesla, Palm Springs, News of the World, I'm Thinking of Ending Things, The Outpost, Color Out of Space, Let Him Go, and Onward. So those are the honorable mentions. I do think that some of these films are worth checking out. I'm thinking of ending things, uh, Colorado Space, The Outpost, are films that took me by surprise. I was not expecting to enjoy them as much as I did. Let Him Go was another one, and Onward, it might not be the best Pixar film of the year, but I certainly had fun with it, even if it's aimed for children. As far as the other ones that are lower, News of the World, Palm Springs, I uh, kind of missed the mark for me a little bit. Still had a lot of fun watching them. Tesla was another surprise. Mank, uh, on technical aspects, was a very good movie, but from a story perspective, didn't go as far as I wanted it to go, especially with all the hype around the film. Um, and Moraine's Black Bottom and Invisible Man were also enjoyable films, but I had issues with the film. But again, still enjoyed the film enough to make it in my honorable mentions list. So with that, let's move into my top 10 films of 2020. At number 10 is The Father, a film about dementia from the perspective of the one suffering from the illness. Uh, in this case, it's Anthony Hopkins who gives one of his best performances in years. It's an emotionally touching and sad film uh, that isn't really about easing pain. It's a heartbreaking story that shows the turmoil it has on everybody and by giving the audience this perspective, we have a unique way to tell a story which never gets boring to watch and purposely done so to get the feel of what it's like to have dementia, which I thought was very clever uh, and an interesting way to present the story. In doing so, however, it does limit what can be told and more insight into the characters would have been nice, you know, into the lives, a little bit more character development. So while it has its creative storytelling, you know, and some really good performances, at the you know it just couldn't be a little higher on the list now if you have known anyone who has suffered through this illness and have tragically lost a family member to this it might have an effect on how you see this film it might be higher on the list but for me personally it didn't have enough there to kind of propel it higher on this list at number nine is Alone, which is an abduction thriller that makes the most of its budget. I mean, it's, it's nothing new. It knows what makes the suspense film effective. And it has many moments of good tension. And that's all I asked for from this film. I went in with completely no expectations. And I was sucked in almost instantly. Uh, the, the, you know, the acting was strong, as was the cinematography. Characters could have been developed a bit better, but you know, this was an unexpected solid thriller uh, That I had a lot of fun with and it was one of the best of 2020 Sometimes simple is just enough for you to get an enjoyable film And number eight is Promising Young Woman a revenge film about a woman's haunting past with male predators It's got good editing lighting an interesting selection of songs and you know it's a it tells a story in a creative way with a shocking third act reveal that everyone's talking about now and uh, I personally didn't see coming. Carrie Mulgan gives one of her best performances in this lighter depiction of the touchy subject and you know it's it's a bold story that will work for some might anger others um, so it's definitely one of the strongest thrillers of the year uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, that third act will have you talking. Some people liked it, some people didn't. I was mixed about it, but definitely thought it was bold, and it's what makes it such a memorable film. 
Um, I think it just needed a little bit more backstory for both the main character and the character of Nina. Uh, in addition to learning some of the motivations that Mulligan had, um, because some of them I just didn't quite understand. But in all, very solid film. I could see why people like it. Just not up there, you know, in the top five or anything like most people are putting it. At number seven is Run. This was my favorite thriller of the year. It follows a homeschooled kid confined to a wheelchair who slowly starts to become suspicious of her mother's intentions. Uh, everything about this film is tense, um, from the score to the tight editing and the top level performances. You know, it might not be the most original film, but it plays to its strengths, it knows what it wants to be, and it sure knows how to work up its audience. I was anxious throughout, and that's how I should be when watching a thriller. It did its job, I was entertained, and it had an engaging story, solid character development. You know, I couldn't ask for anything else from this movie, really. At number six is Minari, an emotional story about an immigrant family's bond that's being tested while trying to make the most of what they have in the 1980s America. Performances are strong, especially from Steven Yeun. Uh, the cinematography is beautiful. It has one of the best scores I've heard, definitely, in 2020. It's, once again, a simple story, but, you know, it's told in such an effective manner. You know, it feels like you're following real people, and you feel all sorts of emotions that leave you smiling, laughing, and, and crying as well. So, why it's not in my top five is that I feel like there was still a lot to explore, and it capped off a little too early for me. Uh, so, it never got that to that point where it was going to give me that gut punch, like these films generally do. So, uh, very solid film, but it just missed that top five. Uh, but I could definitely see why people are liking it, and some people wanted to win Best Picture. Uh, I did enjoy it. Uh, just the top five, I enjoyed a little bit more. Number five is Soul. You know, Pixar is always on top of their game. This time they're bringing us a more adult story about death and living in the moment. It's got its inventive storytelling, it's got good voiceover work, beautiful animation as is expected, and a strong message for its viewer. You know, it might not be the best Pixar film, but it's such a feel-good movie that it was it was a lot of fun to watch, uh, even if it wasn't as heart-wrenching as some of their other works. Uh, this was just a nice, pleasant surprise of the year. I went in thinking that I was going to like it, but I I ended up really enjoying it because of its humor. And this was just a very lighthearted film uh, with a nice message. thought it was charming. I thought the humor worked well. And once again, we're getting original animated films, unlike last year. Like, you know, such a, a weak year for animated films last year, aside from, like, maybe Klaus. That this year, I, I was very happy to get not just one, but two Pixar films that were very good. And number four is The Trial of the Chicago 7, a very relevant film that's focusing on police brutality and a corrupt Justice Department in the 1960s. It's easily one of the best written films of the year. It has snappy dialogue that will engage you, infuriate you, and move you as well. It's got some wonderful standout performances from the ensemble of stars, uh, it's excellently paced, very compelling. You know, some issues that I had with it was, I guess, the ending is a little safe, and the editing sometimes got a bit irritating to watch. But overall, this was a very strong film from Aaron Sorkin, and uh, one of the best uh, courtroom dramas I've seen in some time. Uh, it's being considered as a contender for Best Picture. Probably will be the one that wins Best Picture, um, more than likely. I mean, I know it's maybe a safe pick, but it's also a very good movie that deserves the attention it's getting. At number three is Tenet. The best blockbuster of the year and one of the most ambitious of Nolan's career, um, all for mind-bending films, and this was nothing short of that. It's, it's an epic film. I mean, effects were great, performances are good, sound design was through the roof, literally. <laughs> uh, the action is spectacular to watch. It's surprisingly paced well, even though you don't know what the heck's going on for nearly half of it until the end. Um, my only gripes with this film, other than not understanding a good chunk of this film, was the sound editing, but even that can be fixed with subtitles once you get the 4K, you know, so that's not that much of an issue for me. 
Um, you know, again, not the best of Nolan's filmography, much like Soul isn't in Disney's Pixar's filmography. It's nothing short of delivering. He's always making these big budget crafty films that, you know, they can gauge both mainstream and non-mainstream audiences. And how many people can you say are doing that? Um, so, you know, you can go into the film, see it as a big action blockbuster film, and then you could also watch it and kind of pick at it and start trying to figure out what, what are some of the messages it's trying to say and, you know, what it all meant. Um, I, I feel like there's there's enough room for you know to for everybody enjoy this film whether you're into something that's very deep or you just want to watch you know brainless action it's a film that will leave you talking and definitely calls for multiple rewatches and number two is the sound of metal an unexpected gem from amazon studios that's about the fears and anxiety of losing your ability to hear while also presenting a different outlook on life so Riz Ahmed, he, he's phenomenal in this. He gives one of his best performances in his entire career. This was a very touching film that didn't have all the bells and whistles maybe of some of the other films this year, but this was a very raw and strong look into the life of people who lose their hearing and what they're going through and how isolated they feel. It was gripping, it was moving. A very powerful, strong film that, um, isn't without its problems. I definitely do think the character development could have been better. It's a film that really stuck with me and at the end of the year, compared to all the other films, this, this one stood out far more than all the other films that I've just mentioned in my top 10 list. And number one is Pieces of a Woman. It's another film, much like a lot of films this year, they're about coping with trauma. In this case, it's about the loss of, of a child and what it does to a family and, and relationships. Uh, very powerful film and one of the most moving films of the year. Didn't feel like a movie. It felt like you were on the sidelines watching everything unfold with this couple. But it's a very powerful film with an optimistic message for its audience. And this film never lost a beat. It, ha it held my attention the entire way. Performances are excellent. Vanessa Kirby is phenomenal. Shia LaBeouf is also very good. It's, it, you know, it's, it's a little sad because his personal drama is getting in the way of this movie. And I feel like, you know, he's ruining his chance of winning awards. And this movie's not getting a whole lot of attention. Uh, it's just being swept under the rug. It's getting some nominations, but it's clearly not going to win anything. By far... The best film of the year for me, uh, I don't think any film really touched it this year. There's a lot of movies this year that are getting so much attention that, you know, it, it's kind of funny. Which is why it, it kind of angers me sometimes when you watch these award shows. I mean, all the attention Nomadland is getting right now it is ridiculous. It's one of the most overrated films of the year. I, I gave my uh, honorable mention to Mank. But if you look at my Letterboxd account, it's sitting at number 19. And Moraney's Black Bottom is sitting at number 20. And Nomad lands all the way up in 24. So, I don't know what, what it's doing for people, but it, these were films that uh, missed their mark for me. And, uh, the, the, you know, these were the top 10 films that I enjoyed and I thoroughly recommend. This year has been like all over the place. Everyone has their own opinion of what the best film of the year was. Nobody's list looks the same. Very weird 2020 year. Like I hope we get back on track and have more movies to choose from in 2021. Uh, everything's being moved to 2021 and we're 2022. So um, I'm hoping to get a little bit more of a balanced list of films so i'm not getting all my top 10 best films in november and december so i'd be curious to hear what your favorite films of 2020 were down below in the comments section if you can get me that like down below i'd appreciate the support and subscribe to the channel for more content and as always i will see you guys next time